Hi guys, welcome to this video and in today's revision section we are going to revise on the topic trains which is a subtopic from time distance and speed. Guys, we've already revised time distance and speed and you all are quite familiar with the concepts related with time distance and speed. So today we are going to see the concept of relative speed and we are going to see it in context of trains. So let's get started with this revision session and in this session as I had discussed in time distance and speed there are going to be five questions and you're supposed to solve these five questions each question in 90 seconds or 1.5 minutes. So guys let's start this session. So the first problem is a train approaches a tunnel AB. Inside the tunnel A a cat is located at the point that is 4 7th the distance AB from the entrance. When the train whistles, the cat runs. If the cat decides to run towards A side of the train, the train catches the cat exactly at A. If the train, if the cat decides to run towards B side, the train catches the cat outside the tunnel and the point is located exactly 5 7th distance of the tunnel length. Find the ratio of the speed of the train and cat. So guys, this is an easy one. You have to find out the ratio between the speed of train and speed of cat. Here the time is same. So you basically have to find out the distance, the uh, ratio between the distance covered by the train and the distance covered by the cat in a given span of time. So guys, your time starts now. I give you a small hint. Since here we have 7 in the denominator, take the length of AB or the tunnel as 7 units. That is going to ease your calculations. Alright, so let's get started. Okay guys, now the 90 seconds time has ended and now we have to solve the problem. So the ratio of the speed of the train and cat, the correct answer that we are looking for is 3 is to 1. This was an easy one. If at all you haven't got this particular answer, please pay attention to this solution. Now we have assumed that the uh, total length of the tunnel is 7, 7 units. Now let us assume that the train is at point T and the distance from T to A is X. We are asked to find out the difference, the uh, ratio between the speed of the train and cat. So let us see in the first, what is the first condition that is given. If the cat decides, now the cat is located at 4 7th the distance of AB. So this is where the cat is at point C currently and it is 4 units away from A. So, when the train is whistling from point T till the train reaches X, till the train reaches X, the cat has already covered the distance equal to AC which is 4 units. So, 
when the cat recite, decides to run towards A, when the train is whistling from distance X, the train catches the cat exactly at A, which means that the cat has covered 4 units of distance and the train has covered X units of distance. Now let us see what happens when the cat decides to run towards the B side. When the cat is running towards the B side, the train catches the cat outside the tunnel and the point is located exactly 5 7 the distance. So 5 7 of 7 is 5. So this distance D is going to be 5 units away from B. So what is the total distance that the cat is covering? So the cat is located 4 units away from A. So BC is equal to 3 and 3 plus 5. Total distance covered by the cat is going to be CD. So CD is 3 plus 5 which is 8. And what is the total distance that is covered by the train? So the train is moving from this point T to the point D. So T to D is nothing but X plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 which is X plus 12. Now let us solve for x. So we have 8x equal to 4x plus 48. All I have done is I have cross multiplied and I have got 4x equal to 48. So the value of my x comes out as 12. Which means when the cat is covering 12 units of distance, when the train is covering 12 units of distance, the cat is covering 4 units of distance. So, the ratio comes out as 3 is to 1. I hope you guys have understood this problem and now let us see the next problem. Okay. Two men running along a railway track at the speed of 8 km per hour and 12 km per hour in the same direction in which a train is running. The train overtakes the first man in 6 1 is to 4 seconds and it takes 2 1 is to 2 seconds more to overtake the second man than the first. Find the speed of the train. So guys, this is again an easy one. This deals with the concept of relative speed. Assume that the speed of train is x. Find out the relative speed and find out the distance covered by the train. Here the distance covered is going to be constant and you have to find out the speed of the train. So use the formula speed equal to distance upon time. Alright guys, your time starts now. Okay guys, now the time of 90 seconds is over and the correct answer for the speed of the train is 22 kilometers per hour. Now, if at all you have got this answer, very good. But if you haven't, please look carefully at the solution. Now, 
the relative speed of the train with respect to man 1. is equal to x minus 8. Why minus? Because the train and the man, they all both are uh, traveling in the same direction. Now the relative speed of the train with respect to man 2 is 8x minus 12. Correct? Now the distance traveled is going to be the length of the train. The length of the train in this case is going to remain the constant is going to remain constant because in both the cases only the man speed is changing but the train is remaining the same. So what we have is d is equal to s into t. So my first speed is x minus 8 and the time that is taken is 6 1 is to 4 seconds which is nothing but 25 upon 4 seconds. And that is equal to x minus 12, which is my second relative speed into. Now, it takes two and a half seconds more than the first. So, I have to add two and a half to 25 by 4 plus two and a half comes out as 5 upon 2. When I solve this and I find out the value, I get x is equal to 22 kilometers per hour. Guys, if you notice in this, I am not doing the con con conversion from kilometers per hour to meters per second or I am not converting this time when it is given in seconds because anyway, I am going to equate the two and I, uh, my conversion is going to get crossed out. So, I am not doing any conversion. I can directly use the time. So, this is the value of x. My x was the speed of the train. So, the speed of the train is 22 kilometers per hour. This was a simple one, guys. Now, let us have a look at the third problem. A train, after one hour from starting, met with an accident which details it for derails it for one and a half hour. After this, the train proceeds at 80% of its former speed and arrives 2 hours late. Had the accident happened 80 kilometers farther away from the line, it would have arrived only 1 hour late. Find the speed of the train. So guys, here also you have to use the formula speed equal to distance upon time and you can solve the problem. So guys, this is a bit tough one, but if you logically understand the problem, understand the solution, understand what this problem meant, then you can solve it within 90 seconds. So guys, your time starts now. Okay guys, your 90 seconds time has ended and the correct answer is the speed of the train. Let's 
assume that the speed of the train is x so the speed of the train is 20 kilometers per hour right so how did i get to this answer listen carefully guys this is an easy concept if you understand it you can get to the answer within a very short time and questions like this they are bound to come in most of the competitive exam you just have to understand the logic behind solving these kind of problems now let us assume that the train is moving from a to b let us assume that the accident has taken place at point c so ac the speed of the train is going to be x which is the initial speed so it is x accident happens at c the train spends half an hour here and then after after point c it is running at 80% of the former speed so 80% is nothing but 4 by 5 so it is running at 4 by 5 of x and rub it out so it is running at 4 by 5 x and then it is arriving at 2 hours late so it is taking 2 hours than the normal time now what happens if at all the train the accident happens 80 kilometers from point c so if the accident happens at point d instead of c which is 80 kilometers correct then for till the time it is traveling from c d the train is going to travel at x kilometers per hour right and then from d b it is traveling at four fifth of its speed that is four fifth of x then it is arriving one hour late so can i divide my total distance of a b into three parts so the first part is common in both the cases in both the situation till ac the train is running at x kilometers per hour till ac correct then in the first case accident is happening at c and from c to b the train is running at four fifth of x now if at all i divide this part cb into into two parts cd and D, uh, db wherein in the second situation cd is the distance covered by the train which is 80 kilometers and that the train covers at x kilometers per hour so the train is covering that distance at x kilometers per hour in situation number 2 and in situation number 1 the train is covering that distance by 4 upon 5 x so that is the speed of the train so cd has got two different speeds one is x and the second is 4 by 5 x in the first case ac has got the same speed which is x x so these, these we are talking about the speeds now what is the speed of db in both the cases the train is covering in the first case when the accident has happened at point c the train is covering db distance also at 4 upon 5x speed and in case of the second situation wherein the accident is happening at d the train is still covering that distance at 4.5x so i have in both the situations i just have this particular distance wherein this particular distance of 80 kilometers where the speed of the train is different and that is leading to a difference in the timings so in the first case the time was plus 2 hours and in the next case the time is plus 1 hours but from where is that difference of 1 hour coming so that difference of 1 hour is coming due to the cd the distance cd in the first case the train is traveling that distance at 4 upon 5 x speed and in the second case that train is the same train if at all it gets uh, it meets an accident at point d then it is traveling with a speed of x till c d so this is where the difference between the time period is coming because of the difference in the speeds for the distance travel between c and d I hope you guys have understood till now so all we need to do is we have let us assume that the first time is t1 and the second time is t2 so we have t2 minus t1 which is equal to 2 minus 1 which is equal to 1 
सॉरी टी वन माइनस टी टू इज वन करेक्ट टी वन माइनस टी टू इज कमिंग एज वन बिकॉज टू आर्स एंड वन आर सो दैट वन आर विच इट इज सेविंग इन द सेकेंड सिचुएशन इज बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सपीड सो आई नो स्पीड इक्वल टू डिस्टेंस अपॉन टाइम सो आई हैव टाइम इक्वल टू डिस्टेंस अपॉन स्पीड सो टी वन वट इज माई टी वन सो द डिस्टेंस कवर्ड वन विच इज एट्टी किलोमीटर्स अपॉन द स्पीड ऑफ द ट्रेन इन द फर्स्ट केस द स्पीड ऑफ द ट्रेन इज फोर अपॉन फाइव एक्स एंड इन द सेकेंड केस द डिस्टेंस इज गोइंग टू रिमेन सेम विच इज एट्टी एंड द स्पीड इज एक्स So what I have here is I am going to rub this out. I am going to take it here. So what I have here is if I cancel this, I get twenty and I get hundred. So hundred upon x minus eighty upon x equal to one because the difference is one hour. So the value of my x comes out as twenty kilometers per hour. But what was my x? My x was my initial speed, initial speed of the train, which is exactly what we are asked to find. So, guys, when you have these kind of questions, which talk about the speed reducing, and it talks about the derailment for half an hour, for one hour, for two hours, ignore this information. This information is just not needed. You have to convert this 80% into fractions. you have to assume the original speed as x and then you have to just take the difference between the time so in first case the time was 2 hours late in the second case the time was 1 hour late so you equate that difference which is 1 hour 2 minus 1 which is 1 hour as keep the numerator as the distance divided by the speed which is 4/5 of x in the first case and the distance remains the constant and which is x in the second case so you just have to form this equation once you form this equation you will get the solution right you have to find out the value of x so these kind of questions till past 2 3 years they were very very common in most of the competitive exams so this is how you solve these questions now let us see the fourth question a bullet is fired behind the train and the driver of the train Here's the sound. This had to be three one upon two minutes, three and a half minutes later than the car. If the speed of the train is sixty kilometers per hour, the speed of the sound is one thousand one hundred meters per minute. Find the length of the train. So, guys, again, this is a very very easy question, which is dealing with relative speed and conversion of kilometers per hour into meters per second or meters per minute. So, guys, your time starts now.
Okay guys, now the time has ended and the correct answer is the length of the train is 350 meters. This one was an easy one. I hope you all have got the answer within 90 seconds. So what do you do here? Here you find out the relative speed. Now the, the train and the sound, they are traveling in the same direction. So the relative speed is the difference between the two speeds. So I have 1100 meters per second per minute minus 60 kilometers per hour. Let me first convert this 60 kilometers per hour into meters per minute. So for converting, I have to multiply this by 1000 and divide it by 60. So this comes out as 1000 meters per minute right now I have 1100 meters per minute minus 1000 meter per minute so this comes out as 100 meter per minute so the relative speed is 100 meters per minute now the formula for my speed is distance upon time. So here the total distance travelled is going to be equal to the length of the train. So that is nothing but 100 meters into the time which is 3 and a half minute. So this comes out as 350 meters. The length of the train comes out as 350 meters. This was an easy one guys. I hope you all have got this answer correct. Now let us get to the next question. Yes. Speed of a steam engine is 48 kilometers per hour without any wagon. The decrease in speed is directly proportional to the cube root of number of wagons attached. If 64 wagons are attached, the speed becomes 36 kilometers per hour. Find the number of wagons which are attached with the engine at the speed of 9 kilometers per hour. And the correct answer is 2197. So there are 2197 wagons which are attached to this train. Now how do you solve this problem? Here we are given that the reduction in speed is reduction in speed is proportional to the cube root of the number of wagons attached. Please guys remember to read the question properly. It is talking about reduction in speed. It is not talking about speed. It is talking about reduction which means decrease. Decrease in speed. Now without any wagon the speed is 48 kilometers per hour. And if there are 64 wagons attached then the speed becomes 36. So I have 36 here. 
this is equal to the cube root of 64 and what is the second equation I have? I have to find out what will happen if 9 kilometers, when will the speed become 9 kilometers per hour? So 48 minus 9 is equal to the cube root of x. Correct? Now all I have to do is solve, the value, solve these two equations for the value of x. I am going to divide these two equations. Let's see what I have got. So 36 minus 48 minus 36 comes out as 12 and 48 minus 9 comes out as 39. So I have 12 upon 39 is equal to cube root of 64 is 4 and this divided by the cube root of x. So I get here 3 minus 13. So x is nothing but cube of 13 and the cube of 13 is 2197. So the correct value of x or the number of weapons that are attached is 2197. So this was again an easy one but, but when this question was asked 85% of the people got the wrong answer because they read this question as the speed is directly proportional to the cube root of number of wagons. So all they did is they divided here instead of 48 minus 9 they took 9 and here instead of 48 minus 36 they took 36 and they ended up getting the wrong answer. So guys this was a very very easy question and I was wondering why do people get wrong answer for such an easy question and most of the people do ask me whether such easy questions also come in the exam but yes they do and whenever they do most of the people end up getting the wrong answer since they don't read the question properly. So the conclusion is please read the question pro properly and please have an eye for details of what is asked exactly and what is given. Trains was an easy one if you understand the concept of relative speed and uh, speed distance and time then train questions are one of the most easy questions to solve. So guys with this question I am ending this particular session. See you again tomorrow with a new session with a new concept related with boats and streams which is again a sub concept from speed, distance and time. So see you guys. Wish you all the best. Thank you.